followed an interview is with Paul Kingsnorth, an Englishman living on a small farm in Western Ireland. He's an acclaimed novelist, uh, essayist, and poet. And he has quite a remarkable story of uh, coming to Christianity and uh, orthodoxy in particular. Uh, that was the, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to him to get his story recorded. He wrote a lovely essay called um, The Cross and the Machine in First Things, which I will link to below this video. And you can read more in depth his story. The world is so complex and so fast moving and the machine, if you like, is so all enveloping and, and we've just, we sort of drink its values in. Um, and now with almost everything being mediated through the web, which itself is designed by people with a certain worldview and perspective, you know, we're having our, our whole understanding of reality kind of bent out of shape daily by, just by, the, by the screens that we imbibe everything through. And it's just immensely baffling. And I think that so much of the kind of chaos around at the moment, culture war stuff and, and sort of confusion and anger that's everywhere is just due to the fact that there are just so many people living in this kind of hyper reality, which we're all encouraged to live in. And nobody knows what's going on or who's in control or who to trust or what the hell is even true. And it's, yeah, as you say, Seraphim Rose was kind of predicting this stuff 50 years ago, as were plenty of people um, from other, I mean, other perspectives. I mean, interestingly, writers like, you know, Jacques Ellul or Ivan Illich, who come from a Christian as well, who, who wrote very perceptively about technology again half a century ago. They could all see what was coming, if not in the detail, then, in, then generally. And plenty of non-Christians could see it too. It's, um, it's yeah, it's it's kind of enveloping us now. We're in a 50 years on and it's all it's all here. So it's, there's, a, there's a kind of urgency to understanding that, I think. And just, you know, as you say, how to, what it is and how to escape from it. And what the kind of the theology of the machine almost is, you know, what's going on here? What does this mean? Yeah, yeah. And and then how to how to communicate that to, you know, people under the age of twenty five mm. who have grown up in front of a screen. Just the other mm. day, I was, I was speaking with a good friend, and and he said that uh, his child, um, you know, he can see kind of the the despair that is created when. Uh, when your world is, is is digital and uh you know not a desire not, not much of a desire to go outside um mm. and, no know, i think you're absolutely right world. yeah and I, I think actually that's going to lead to a greater and greater desire for for reality you know and for a truth beyond that um which you know a, a, a christian ought to be able to provide you know if christianity is real and true um, then it ought to be able to have answers to that. You know, it ought to be able to be, no, I don't know if exactly a refuge is quite the right word, but, you know, we ought to be able to say, well, you know, here's what's going on here and here's what reality looks like. And here's a, here's a mode of resistance to that as well, actually, you know, not necessarily in political terms, but in spiritual terms, certainly, you know, it's, it's, if it's spiritual warfare, then then that's what we're dealing with, you know? <laughs> so, so there's a, I think there's a, there's a need for that. There's a, a sense of, I have it. I mean, I don't know. If it's, I doubt it's something I could do, but it's, you know, somebody somebody or some people need to think harder about this. As I say, the theology of the machine, what's going on here and how can we explain this to people? Because it's only going to get more intense very fast. It's not going to be long before we have terrifying artificial intelligences stalking around the place, um, you know, and then it's kind of all bets are off at that point. So what does it even yeah. mean to be human at that point? And we're going to get into that territory very soon. So, yeah, yep. there's a... There's a there's going to be more and more young people, I think, wanting to sort of unplug, if you like, and, and wondering where to go when they do lesson about how to live your life. Yeah. And, and the more I looked yeah. at the environmental crisis long before I was a Christian, I'd come to a similar conclusion that actually it has to start with us. Um, grand schemes for how to solve everything are no use at all if we haven't engaged in any kind of internal process to work out how we're going to detach ourselves from from these kind of addictions, if you like, you know, which is a it's a very hard process. You know, it's not, it's not a, it's not a simple, a simple path, but I think it's probably the only one. Yeah. 
well, and it's uh, certainly not uh, not popular. Uh, <laughs> it's very unpopular indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and most most modern uh, religious expression is just uh, ultimately self worship. And uh, well, I mean, I think that's the thing as well. You know, with 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 orthodoxy, and again with other serious faiths and other serious uh, versions of Christianity too, you have. You know what, what? What does Christ tell you to do? He tells you to, to to deny yourself and pick up a cross and follow Him. So the two things He's telling you to do, if you want to to walk the correct path, are deny yourself. In other words, break away from your ego and all of your desires, and then carry a cross and get crucified on it. So you know this is not an easy sell, <laughs> as you say, especially in the age of, of kind of selfies and narcissism and all the rest of it. It's not appealing, uh, and that's one of the reasons that Christians have tried to. Modern Christians have tried to make it appealing, but I don't think you can because actually, you know, it's 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 sacrifice, it's self-sacrifice, but it's that's that's where it has to start, I think, and it's it's really hard. I think it's always been hard for all, all people, but maybe it's maybe it's harder than ever when our whole culture tells us that that very notion is ludicrous. You know, that it's all about it's all about our self-realization. Yep, yep, and then and then the solution is. Uh more more narcotics of whatever sort uh, yeah, well, more, more technology broadly i mean more technological intervention you know this is the machine any problems you've got fundamentally at some level technological intervention will be able to solve whether it's medicine or uh, the digital world or you know development or whatever whatever version of it is there will always be a exer- external systematic solution to it um but there won't and we know that by now Unfortunately, because that would be a nice, easy path, but it never works. <laughs> it won't. I mean, it's uh, and you, you see the the falsity of all this stuff, you know, in the um, you know uh, the move towards uh, just denying biology and denying physics, and in in the pursuit of these other cultural things, these other cultural values, which. Uh, you know, you just aren't going to, they're trying to defy gravity. Yeah, it's like a giant, almost like a giant test at the moment. I mean, we've, at the heart of this culture is the notion that if we can liberate ourselves from everything, then we'll be happier. You know, the things that cause us unhappiness are kind of systems or structures that we have to be liberated from, you know, which sometimes is true. But actually, as you say, we're getting to the point now where we're trying to liberate ourselves from reality. Um, in a very fundamental way, and it's actually just making far more people unhappy. Um, you know, it's the opposite of denying yourself. It's denying denying what's outside yourself, and it's the opposite of having to do difficult work. But it's for a whole generation brought up on these on, on these screens that pump adverts into their heads all the time and give them this endless message of you know you you can be whatever you want, which is a consumer message ultimately. You know, it's the message of consumer capitalism. You know, you can basically buy any identity you want, be whatever you like, but it isn't true. So you've got a whole generation of people who've been brought up on this lie who think that they can, as you say, mess with the structure of reality itself and that will somehow fill the void inside them because that's what the machine is telling them, but it, but it won't. You know, It's going to betray them all. We're going to have this huge culture war and everyone's going to feel betrayed and no one's going to be happy. Um, so yeah, it's, but it's, 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 it's a, these are the reasons why you know, there's a, as you said, there's a, there's probably a duty on Orthodox people to start thinking about how to talk about this um, and how to how to explain that in many ways, you know, this is what's been sort of predicted or talked about for thousands of years. You know, it's not in, in some ways it's not new at all, um, but it's uh, finding the language to talk about it. I think. Yeah, yeah, and then doing it in a way that is that can't be misinterpreted as not loving. Yeah, I mean, you can always get involved in the sort of Christian culture war as well, which is the last thing you want to be doing. You know, you've got to keep well away from, you've got to keep well away from the political manifestations of it, actually, uh, and keep well away from taking sides or any of that stuff. Um, because ultimately, it's not it's not politics. It's a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual crisis we're going through. You know, our whole culture is in a deep spiritual crisis, and all of the culture wars and the political ructions are just a manifestation of that, um, because we have got a whole culture that doesn't, have anything at its center except the self you know we've dethroned christ and we put ourselves on the throne or we've put the machine on the throne whatever it is and and yeah there's no there's no future for that so it is as you say you've got to have that 
you've got to keep the love at the center of it, but at the same time, you've got to you've got to keep your feet on the ground and 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 stand up for what you think is true. So yeah, that's a hard balance. And the whole culture also militates against it because we're endlessly encouraged to fight all the time. You know, we're always encouraged to get a, get on, take a side against somebody else, take have a battle, have an argument. The, the technology is almost designed to put us into groups so that we can fight other groups. And humans are very good at that. You know, we love putting ourselves into groups, <laughs> fighting other groups of humans. But again, it's um, you've got to you've got to. This is why it's so good to just keep going back to the gospels all the time because you can just you can find the teaching in there. And you can remind yourself constantly of the thing you forgot yesterday, which happens a lot. Did ears burn out those words? Did a voice whisper absurd? Did your mind comprehend and ask if you'd last till the end? 